pray for us as much as they possibly can. I'm, I know we also here with a, a bunch of our elected officials, but I, I do want to specifically thank our council people for being here as well. All of them I saw. Councilman Morales here was here. Uh, Councilman Clark. Uh, I saw Councilman Ramos and Councilman Quintana. And in the back of me is my fraternity brother, Captain Patrick, uh, Council of Southport. But so, so is. <laughs> So is Larry Crump out there as well. That's why I'm dressed up like this, not, not, not just because I like it, but because I'm a member of the oldest and coldest black fraternity. It's a collegiate fraternity in the nation, I'm a fraternity. But also, Reverend Martin Luther King was a member of that fraternity as well. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote. Before we get to that, today we lost Dexter King. Wait a minute, and before I even go there, I, I, I want to thank, I, I heard my son out there, so I want to thank my wife and my children out here to my left as well. We, 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 we lost Dexter King uh, today, who was, if you didn't know, Martin Luther King Jr.'s youngest son. Uh, he was just 62 years old. He was named actually after the church, the, the church that King passed in uh, during the Montgomery bus boycott. And he was just seven years old when King, his father, was taken from us when he was assassinated, murdered in Memphis, Tennessee. Because I know the fancy name for what happened to King is assassination, but we know what that means in layman's term. We know he was murdered. He was killed by a man, let's get this, he was killed by a man named James Earl Ray who was a petty crook, a uh, gas station robber, if you will, who was locked up in Missouri State Penitentiary, who was on the run for almost a year. And this guy, a petty crook, found his way all the way to Memphis, Tennessee, my God, and found the hotel, the Lorraine Hotel, that Martin Luther King happened to be in, got a rooming house, went to a rooming house next door to the hotel that Martin Luther King happened to stay in, all the way from Missouri. Uh, and he happened to get the room that looked right at King's room. This is interesting. And on April 4th, 1968, he took Martin Luther King's life. Was not that, 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 then when he left, when he did that, he escaped to Toronto, Canada. There's a petty group from Missouri. Hmm. Got a passport in Toronto, Canada, and went from Canada to London. <laughs> what a story. You do something, you have trouble finding your grandma in South Carolina. <laughs> Make it around the corner of 10th Street, my son. <laughs> he uh, went to Toronto, Canada, got a passport as a criminal. Went to London. A month later, was arrested in Heathrow Airport in London on the way to Brussels. Now, even the King family don't believe that. It's pretty strange that a uh, petty crook could murder Martin Luther King and find his way all the way to England. Uh, and they still want to tell us that James and Earl Ray is responsible uh, for this killing. Keep watching Skatic TV. It's pretty interesting to me. And I would say that King is dead not because he wanted people to like black folks. But because he was opposed to Jim Crow. Because he was opposed to the Vietnam War. Because he was against poverty and unemployment. Because he wanted people to have decent wages. King was murdered because he had Operation Breadbasket. One of the march people into Washington, D.C. to demand that we get paid fairly 
that when America, we went to American vaults of democracy, that the checks we brought was not marked insufficient funds. He said that there was a time when black people in this country began to stand up straight because they realized that a man couldn't ride your back unless you were bent over. That we made an indifferent and unconcerned nation rise from lethargy and subpoenaed its conscience to appear before the judgment seat of morality to question civil rights. And it said, we gained manhood in a nation that has always called us boy. This is Martin Luther King speaking. This isn't Mayor Baraka. So if it sounds a little radical, just attribute it to the speaker. This is what Martin Luther King believed. And so he lost his life trying to fight things that he called militarism, that he called economic exploitation that he thought was socially unjust, and that he realized that fighting for us to go into the lunch counters with white folks wasn't enough. That the same people who were angered that, uh, about the abuse that was happening in the South were not with him in the northern centers of America where we couldn't even afford to eat at those lunch counters anyway. King began to see this later on in his life so he became a dangerous man. In fact, before he died, most Americans in the Harris Poll said they did not like Martin Luther King Jr. And a month before he passed, he visited us. There's something special about New York, yo. Don't, don't let people make you believe otherwise. And so Martin Luther King came here a month before he headed on down to Memphis. He was here in Nazi. He spoke at Southside, uh, uh, now called Malcolm X Shabazz High School. Yeah, there was a young man in the audience who became the youngest school board member. His name was Larry Ham. I think he's running for the U.S. Senate now. But he, he was in the audience that day. And before he left Newark, he visited my father. He came to my father's house. And he told my father that we needed to have a united front. I know that's difficult for us to understand uh, because we still are fighting to have a united front today. That means he thought that the folks who wanted to fight for housing should be with the folks who wanted to fight against police brutality. He thought the people who was fighting against police brutality should be with the people who wanted us to eat right. And he thought that people who thought we should eat right should also be with the people who wanted us to fight for decent housing. The people who wanted us to fight for, for decent housing should be with the people who wanted us to have a fair wage. Make sure you keep watching Skadek TV. And those who wanted us to have a fair wage should be with the folks who fought for labor rights. And, and the folks who fought for labor rights, come on, you get what I'm getting at, right? And, and the folks who fought for labor rights uh, 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 should be with those who believe we need to have our own schools, our own libraries, our own businesses, our own bus companies. Uh, those people all should be together, that we should have a united front, that we should all be together because all our problems are the same. He wanted us to have a united front, but we so busy fighting over petty and foolish things that our enemies don't have to fight us anymore because after we finish with each other, come on, there ain't much left for them to do because we already weak and halfway destroyed, fighting over the mic, over position, over title, over block, over presidency, vice presidency, over who's going to be heard from. Who's gonna speak first? Who's gonna be out front first? Who's gonna be second? Who's gonna be third? We fight over all these. Whose church is the biggest? Who mosque is the biggest? Who speak the best? Who, who closer to the governor? Who not the closer to the governor? Who got the best suit, the best shoes? Who haircut is the best? You know, really ignorant and foolish things that have nothing to do with our freedom but more to do with our demise. So Martin Luther King wanted us to be united, but it's hard for us to be united when we're fighting one another. Like we, we think each other is the enemy because we forgot that our enemy was poverty, was unemployment, was poor housing, was 
discrimination, police violence and brutality. You forgot those was our enemy because somebody told you that you was your enemy. That's what happened. But I'm going to sit down and introduce our something, but I'm going to tell you, we don't, we, don't, we don't have a right. We don't have a right to behave this way. You don't have a right to do this, man. Your people tied rice in the braids of their hair so they could have food when they ran away from slavery in the back woods of hopelessness and despair. You don't have a right, sir, to be this ignorant when your grandfather's prayed under the light of the moon in the back woods of Mississippi because they wouldn't allow them to read his right. You don't have the right to be this foolish. Because Mary McLeod was doing so sweet potato pies on the side of the road so you can get an education and grow up. Africa, America. 